There have been several things which humanity achieved since its inception on Earth millions of years ago. One of them was democracy. Over the past hundreds of years, democracy have flourished and moved to different countries. But is it in the same healthy position which we expected it to be? Let's analyze it. Let us start by talking about the word trust. A word which was introduced in English vocabulary sometimes in 1200s. It originated from Old Norse, Traust, which meant help, confidence, protection, and support. Since then, it has become one of the single most important words defining humanity and its social fabric. As we all know, humans live in society. Trust is one of the most important factor having us live in a society and enable us to be called as social beings. The other important word which we all associate with trust, transparency, is democracy. Democracy has its origin from Greek language and it comes from two words actually. Demos meaning people who live in a geography and kratos meaning power to rule. Now why are these two related? Democracy flourishes on the premise of belief in individual, belief in shared power, belief in concept of society. And in a society devoid of trust, democracy cannot flourish. In the few decades, while most countries have embraced democracy, the trust factor in existing democracies has suffered some blue. Corruption has been one of the reasons why people's trust in the established system has diminished vastly. Let's explore some examples. US, not only the oldest democracy, but one of the most powerful developed nations in the world. But it has not been away from the cases of bribery and corruption. Just to name a few, the XYZ affair, Watergate scandal, Whiskey Ring scandal, Tipa Dome scandal, Iran Contra, there are many others. Similar to US, India, the world's largest democracy. Every five years, more than 900 million people participate in choosing their elected government. But it has its own history of corruptions. A 2G scam, Colgate scam, stamp paper scam, Commonwealth scam, Beaufort scam, and many others. A billions of dollars were siphoned out of the system into personal accounts, parked in safe heavens. But this was not just about money. It was also about privilege. You see, when resources are diverted based on authority, it deprives millions of their own rights to those resources. When such incidents happen repeatedly, it broadly leads into five things. Number one, deprivation inequality. Number two, undermining of the sustainable development goals which every country has. Number three, economic inefficiency. Number four, impunity and injustice. And number five, the most important piece which we'll talk about here in this particular video is loss of trust. Remember this word as this is the foundation, a foundation on which democracy thrives. Mistrust in the system and its representatives leads to hollow and artificial democracy. I mean, there are many countries which have democracy, but you can't really call them democracy. But we are not here to talk about corruption. What I want to do here is to share a few ideas how we can re-establish trust and transparency and bring back the sheen of democracy. Now, since I'm a technologist, I'm going to share one key piece of technology, which probably is the next biggest thing happened since the innovation of banking. It's blockchain, the technology behind Bitcoin and several other cryptocurrencies. It was initially invented to end poverty, eliminate corruption, and provide financial inclusion for all. Now, primarily propelled by the financial crisis of the year 2008, it became a key inflection point in history of finance. Before we go any further, let's define blockchain. Now, simply put, blockchain is a database where every block represents an entry and chained to other blocks, this forms a, you know, a blockchain. An entry into the chain can never be modified, deleted, or recreated. So let's start with a very quick brief introduction and evolution of blockchain and its adoption on a technology timeline. The first blockchain came into existence in 1991. It was designed by Stuart Haber and Scott Storneda. For almost 18 years, nothing really happened. People were experimenting. Then in 2009, Bitcoin takes birth after release of paper on Bitcoin by Satoshi Nakamoto. Then in 2010, first purchase of Bitcoins takes place. Now, as we step into 2013, transactions using Bitcoins surpasses 1 billion US dollars and Vitalik Buterin releases Ethereum white paper. Now soon in 2014, Ethereum is launched, purely funded by crowdsourcing. Now remember that this was purely and purely funded by crowdsourcing. There was no commercial interest involved. 
Now, smart contracts came into existence in 2015. Now, since everything has its own evolution, in 2016, first security incident happened associated with the network. Now, since then, as we stepped into 2021, several key inno innovations happened, such as decentralized applications, the rise to $1 trillion in market capitalization, innovations such as NFTs, stable coins, tokens, etc., etc., etc. All in all, blockchain powers a new era in financial technology, decentralizing it out of the control of the governments and large banks, enabling more control amongst people and decentralizing it further. Now, keep in mind the core value of the technology is transparency, financial inclusion, and decentralization. The same it brings to all its applications which are built on it. So it brings us to our moot point that can it be used as an anti-corruption -anti tool as well? Can it power the next era in transparency in governance? But well, it turns out, yes. While it largely depends on contextual elements such as legal system, social or political settings, the technology itself is really powerful. Let's discuss a few scenarios and how blockchain can make it really tough for corrupt practices to proliferate. So let's start by implementation in governance and administration. Now, since blockchain is a consensus driven network, every change, decision and transaction needs to be communicated by all the participating nodes or in normal terms, participants of the network. Which means there can never be a decision on a blockchain network without consensus from all the parties. This brings high degree of transparency in government decisions and open registries can facilitate the monitoring of registries and reduce risk of corruption to a very high level. You would be wondering what it means. In simple terms, it means that every decision which the government or any other administrative body needs to take has to go through the scrutiny of all participating bodies on a blockchain. Now, how does it help in administration? Now, the promise of tamper-proof record, which corrupt clerks or bureaucrats cannot modify, is a huge deterrent. On top of this, the distributed network of ledger makes it difficult to falsify or mutate entries. So let's talk about government projects and contracts. Now, self-executing contracts powered by blockchain and smart contracts can enable transparent and ininterruptible execution of public contracts, enhancing timelines, reducing human intervention, and red tapeism. Now, this alone can sort out a lot of issues. Now, remember, all transactions on a blockchain are open and searchable by public. Every penny spent is recorded and available for access, which means there is no way one can do tricky things such as double entry, double spends, etc., etc., etc. Powered by consensus, every transaction associated with government spending is open, registered, and correct. Let's talk a little bit about government procurement. In government procurement systems, a blockchain ledger could record and secure key events in a procurement process. But this would prevent tampering and allow for audits of the process, extending what already is available in open procurement systems. Property and company registers, procurement data, or provenance records are areas considering the use of blockchain technologies because of their inherent transparent nature. One key development which has happened in a lot of countries, including India, has been the advent of national identification. Since every transaction is executed on a decentralized network and is consensus driven, making fake IDs and passports is impossible on a blockchain. This not only secures invaluable citizen data, but also but eliminates any chance of falsified national identities. Remember, these false and fake national IDs are used by terrorists and criminals to execute their criminal plans. One of the areas where a lot of corruption is inherent is public benefit. So before we start talking about how blockchain can power public benefits. I wanted to talk about a famous incident. One leader in India said only 15 paise reaches to a common man out of every rupee disbursed by the government. The reason mostly is the opaque mechanism which moves this money. Obviously, when the process itself is opaque, who is touching the money, how it is getting disbursed, who is getting the allocation is not known. What blockchain can do is it can enable rigorous registration of spend and leakage associated with every penny of the government benefits. Any balance can be easily matched and the consensus authorities can always be held accountable. Every single transaction can be easily linked to the beneficiaries as well as to the officers who were involved in the money movement. This makes it literally impossible to steal. Another key area is provenance and logistics. You see, data shows every year several billions of dollars are lost due to leakage in logistics provenance gaps. Blockchain can help optimizing provenance and logistics, which will in turn help optimizing supply chain and reduce fake stuff traveling in the economy. Moreover, it completely eliminates the concept of black money. Linking fiat to digital currencies could help governments reduce hoarding and parallel economies proliferating due to 
tax avoidance. All in all, I will not hold back myself by saying that blockchain is truly a tool to kill corruption and bring transparency to a complex bureaucratic setup, improve people's trust in the system, and also help governments reach the last mile with full efficiency. It's time for the governments to reclaim their people's trust. Without trust, democracy cannot prevail. So until next time, God bless us all. See you again. Thank you.